Miss Thorpe, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing fine. I like the backdrop and everything like that. I know you're just getting off of school, but I want to take you back a little bit to last year real quick, okay? Yeah. Yeah. In June, you spoke with President Obama. What was that experience like? So exciting. Um, I'm, I'm still, you know, just taken aback by the whole thing. Uh, he was gracious. Um, he's, he's our president and he's, he's dynamic. He's awesome. Uh, the, the library, the center is, is going up right now. I, I drive by it every day and I'm, I'm just so happy to be, to know that it's in our city and our students will, will have a chance to go there and learn and participate and, and, and just be a part of history. What did that mean to you and your students to see the first black president congratulating you, a black woman who was a teacher in the classroom at South Shore International? It, it was just inspiring because wow, it could happen to me. It could happen to them where they could actually see and, and, and talk to the president. It was amazing because, you know, we never ever thought, even I, I never thought that could possibly happen. And uh, doors were open uh, because of uh, the Tulsa um, and the Chicago race riots, those doors opened and made it possible for uh, us to uh, get in touch with the Obama Foundation. So it was just a wonderful experience. The students, I mean, they're still talking about it. They've graduated, uh, but, um, you know, it's something that they can, you know, really, really use uh, in their future and on their academic resume, future, career, all of that. I know it must have been such an amazing experience to speak with someone who is living history as a history teacher, as an African American history teacher. And you talk about the Tulsa riots, the Chicago riots. This is all Black history in the making. But we're living in a time period where we're living in global and world history during a pandemic. Take us into Ms. Thorpe's history class right now. What are we hearing? What are we seeing? And what has it been like over the last two years almost? Well, it's, it's, it's been challenging. I, I, I have to admit it's been challenging. Uh, we're getting through it. Um, my students are back in the classroom. Uh, school has been in session for three weeks in person. We're back in the classroom. And um, I myself, I'm, I'm just taking a different approach. Um, I'm really uh, delving into self-efficacy and, and providing or giving students the tools that they need to be successful. Um, I'm, I'm really into um, explicit instruction in terms of metacognition, helping them to understand how they approach assignments, how they approach projects. It's a mindset. Um, and that's where I'm going there. Uh, more motivating uh, and, in, and trying to inspire them because they've been through a lot. Uh, they've seen some things. Uh, they've experienced some, some, some tragic things being at home. And uh, I, just, I just really, really feel that I have a responsibility not only to teach, but to inspire and to motivate. You are doing that with such an inspiring message right there and to see that the former president came and spoke to you but what exactly were your students facing and what were you doing to motivate them throughout the early stages of the pandemic and until now when they're transitioning uh into in-person classes uh you know per <laughs> it's the simple it's just real real simple things it's just me expressing to them that I believe in them, that I care about them, that, you know, just, just, just uh, pushing them to, to reach heights that they don't think that they can do it. And, you know, just being, being there for them. I mean, I, I, know, I know that just sounds simple, but believe it or not, they don't get that from all of their teachers, unfortunately. Right. Do many of their teachers look like them? Like what, sort of demographic are we talking about at this school here to have a, a black woman teacher? I come from the same place they come from. I, I'm from the west side of Chicago, grew up on the west side of Chicago. I've, I've seen the same things that they've seen. 
but I've overcome and, you know, I, I've persevered. Um, and I tell the students, you know, you all are descendants of, of our ancestors who survived the Middle Passage, who survived slavery and Jim Crow. And, and you can survive systemic racism even today. You can do it because that's just in our DNA. That's just who we are. We are survivors. So that type of talk, um, that, that type of motivation, it's inspiring. When we talk about last year, they were navigating kind of not being in the classroom, a virtual world, and there was this learning loss. How do you catch these students up? How do you bring them up to speed in person? Three weeks in now, what is that challenge actually like? Well, you know, I just believe that we still have to have high expectations. I still have to present content that's grade level. Um, and I, I just can't lower, I, have, I can't lower my standards, um, but I have to take the extra time to get them there. So there are some students in my class, it's, instruction is personalized. There are some students in, in class that are right there. They haven't lost a thing. There, and there are some students that that, that gap um, has widened in terms of uh, their abilities and, and widen, uh, the disparity has widened in terms of uh, how they perform and, you know, what they're performing on standardized tests, what they're doing in class. You know, they didn't have the support. Some of them didn't, a lot of them didn't have support at home. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, but I'm trying to meet the students where they, where they are, trying to keep those um, instructional, uh, my instructional strategies, keeping them at grade level, uh, keeping my expectations high. I'm an IB instructor as well. So um, it's a lot of skill-based learning, uh, teaching them how to, how to do certain things so that they can um, really, really get the diploma. There are certain things that I still have to do to prepare my seniors to be able to sit for that IB exam and get the diploma so that they that can you know, make their college experience a little bit easier financially for them. Teachers are asked to kind of make these big strides for students right now and help them get over these mountains, whether it's from learning loss or we're talking about health and, and mental health and other things in the classroom room right now. Um, and then we talk about how black and minority students are disproportionately affected by the virus, and they're facing even more than a nor normal student. Um, what has it been like juggling so much as a teacher um, and having to do multiple jobs? How is it on you? It's been extremely, it's extremely difficult. Um, believe it or not, uh, being at home for that year, um, uh, over a year, that was more challenging than actually being in the building. Um, people don't, you know, they think because I was at home, I wasn't working. But it was, ex it was extremely tough, you know, juggling three different classes. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really stressful. But we got through it. We got through it and we're back in the building. I'm so glad we're back in person. Uh, our students need us there. They need to be in the building uh, socially. They need, they need our support. Um, and you know, now there's um, a push for remote learning as well. We do need flexibility, but um, probably education as we know it has probably changed um you think it's changed yeah probably as we know it and i'm not saying that that's a bad thing we need we need more choice i mean um just just how how administrators um administrate in terms of of teacher we have to we may have to leverage uh teachers expertise a little bit differently now well i I know you all have juggled a lot and teaching is this thankless job that you're just doing and you've been doing for over 25 years now. So I wanna commend you for that. Your 24th, 25th, 26th year is the toughest time period of our lives. 
what keeps you moving forward? I take my job very seriously. And, and, and more so than that, I care about my students. I care about them. When, when they come into my classroom, I want them to feel safe and I want them to feel nurtured. And I want them to, to think that anything is possible. And when something is challenging, I take it upon myself to just make that road easier for them to succeed. And, and, and I really, I really, really take that very seriously. Before you became a teacher, someone was your teacher. Someone taught you what you're doing now. Who was that for you? What do you want to say to the mentor and the teacher in your life? Well, I, I graduated and I went to Whitney Young. It's a, a, a selective enrollment school, a great school. And I had just some great, I have some great teachers that I'll never, ever forget that inspired me. Um, Mr. Hunter was an, was an English teacher. He was, he was so stern, but motivated me and, and taught, me, taught me how to write. Um, teachers like Miss, Miss Sharp and Miss Rappo, they encouraged me to speak up and use my voice. Um, at Jackson State, when I went on to Jackson State, uh, uh, HBCU, mm -hmm. the teachers there, um, my, my history teachers, uh, Dr. Robinson, these were just people that, that motivated and, and, inspi and inspired me to, you know, to, to be that light uh, for, for my community. Thank you for being a light to Chicago students. There are so many teachers out there right now. We even have a teacher shortage. There are so many out there right now who don't know what their next move is going to be or if they're going to move forward. Is there any advice you wanted to leave with them like your teachers at Whitney Young left with you? Do it for the kids. Do it for your students. Your students need you. Um, do it for them. Nurture them care about them, go that extra mile. You may have to come in early. You may have to stay late during this time of, you know, being back into the building. Our students need so much more and education has changed. How we teach has changed. And we, we, we're, we're going to have to step up to the plate and we're going to have to be there and provide things that our students need socially, emotionally. Thank you so much, Ms. Thorpe, for rolling with the punches, for navigating this virtual world and these moving modalities that we're talking about in education for Chicago's children. Uh, my special guest, Ms. Monique Thorpe, she's a history teacher at South Shore International in Chicago. She's from the west side of Chicago. Is there anything that you want to leave us with? Any last and final words? No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for shedding a light on, on, this, um, on this issue. Uh, life after the pandemic or during the pandemic and how it is affecting uh, black and brown students throughout the country.